Hey, what's up, people? It's me, John Avenger, again. Um, this is going to be a departure from my uh, hit movies that disappointed me list. Uh, I've done enough of those for a while. I wanted to do something different. Um, anyway, I want to say uh, some of the movies that I've been watching recently in the last week or so, because I was sick last week. I wasn't able to do that many videos. I did a couple for you guys, but I had, was had, I had a really bad cold, and I don't want to cough and sneeze on the camera and, you know and lose my thoughts. So, I'm going to take a look at some of the movies that I've been watching over the last week or so, and I'm going to talk to you guys about it briefly. I don't want to make this ten minutes or more, you know. Anyway, um, the first one I saw, uh, Bounty Hunters 2. This is the sequel to the first Bounty Hunters with Michael Dudikoff and Lisa Howard. It, it's uh, the subtitle Hardball. This was an awesome sequel. I thought it was a lot of fun. I thought Michael Dudikoff and Lisa Howard still had the chemistry from the first film. There's some slow parts that they're not together, but I think the sequel is very well done. The action is good. It's badass. It's R-rated. There's no shaky cam. The villain is pretty decent. It goes at a fast pace. It's a lot of fun. I would definitely recommend this sequel if you've seen the first one. Because I thought that both of them are really good. And I think they they should have been in theaters. They were direct to video and they didn't need to be because they're better than a lot of action movies today. Enough said. Okay, next I saw uh, The Unsuspected. Uh, this was a, uh, I think, a crime drama that I saw last last week. And I thought it was pretty good. You know, it was very well acted. A lot of these films from the 40s and the 50s are really, really well acted. Uh, you pretty much know who it is. I think it has... Um, uh, what was his name? Uh, Claude Rains from the original Invisible Man. He did a really good acting job. You know, he, he can act his way into anything. I mean, the man is, is meant to be a good actor. Uh, it's a good movie. It's an older film. Check it out sometime. Uh, next, I have uh, a James Bond film. The first one I've seen with Sean Connery, and that is Diamonds Are Forever. I just got it on Blu-ray. I'm going to show it on my next DVD update. It was a really good film. It goes by quick. It's it's a it's a long movie. It's like two hours, but it goes by real quick. Actually, I think it's under two hours. It's not. It doesn't drag on like other Bond films that are way too long. You know that some of it could have been uh, cut. Connery's a good Bond, I'll say. Uh, I think he's a really good Bond. My favorite is still um, Roger Moore is probably one of the best ones that I've seen, and I also like Timothy Dalton. But the film was good. I like Jill St. John. She was a good Bond girl. The villain was pretty decent. Uh, it was like a twin uh, look-alike. I don't know, a British guy, I think. Uh, Bambi and Thumper, those two girls that were kicking Bond's ass. That was pretty fun to watch. You know, it was different. Uh, the campy tone, I don't think the movie was that campy. I thought it was really well done. And the action was well done. Uh, hold on. I gotta do something. Hold on. Got away. Sorry for that interruption, folks. It's summer and there's bugs and it's hot. So, anyway, like I was saying, Diamonds Are Forever is one of the best Bond films of Connery. It was his last film for a while until he did Never Say Never Again, which is a, a remake to Thunderball, which I haven't seen yet. But I'm going to see all the Bond films before I see Skyfall. Uh, you know, all the old ones with Connery, the rest with Roger Moore, and the one that I need to see with. Uh, Pierce Brosnan, but Diamonds Are Forever was good. I liked it. Next was The Crow, the very original Crow. Screw a remake. It's not needed. The original Crow is fantastic. I miss Brandon Lee a lot. I got the DVD. I will see it again sometime this year. He did a great performance for what he did on screen. Very, very dramatic. You know, really good action. Very grisly. The film, it, if you thought The Dark Knight was a grizz, dark and grisly film, you gotta see The Crow. That movie outdarks The Dark Knight. It is bloody, it is brutal, it is R-rated, it's a much shorter film, it's more epic, the cinematography is insanely good, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, what you call it, Brandon Lee doesn't have to change his voice, he's just really badass, I mean, the villain looks like Sephiroth from Final Fantasy VII, if he had black hair, that guy could have played a live-action Sephiroth, easily. Um, the little girl was good in the film, the teen girl. It's just, it has a lot of atmosphere. That movie was really good. I really wish that Brandon Lee had lived through that pro 
project because he was great in it, and I miss him like crazy. He would have been in Expendables one, two, or three if he was still alive. I I believe that. Okay, next. Uh, but I recommend The Crow. It's an awesome movie. Next, last week in the theater, I saw Tammy, which was on one of the unfunniest movies I've seen this year, and it will be in my worst of 2014, because I thought it was a very lackluster script. I mean, I'm not going to say too much about it. I wanted to save my ranting for the end of the year when I do my best, worst, and honorable mentions of 2014, but this movie was really unfunny. Just a lot of crappy jokes, you know, sex jokes, and drug-related jokes, and, and, and body humor, and just... It's very unfunny. Melissa McCarthy's acting was pretty good, but the writing was really bad. I mean, they wasted a lot of talent in the movie, like Susan Sarandon and and uh, Kathy Bates. These women have won Oscars, and Melissa McCarthy got a nomination for Bridesmaids. Bridesmaids is a much better comedy. You want to see a better comedy with Melissa McCarthy, see that. That's an awesome comedy, and that has Kristen Wiig, who's funny in almost everything when she's used right. And that movie was actually well directed and well written. And uh, anyway, Tammy is a thumbs down. I wouldn't recommend that one. Next, uh, Lady Be Good. It's a uh, musical from the 1940s that was really, really well sung, well acted, very funny, really, really solid film. The problem I have with the film is that it's a little bit too long. It's like 112 minutes. It's like almost two hours, and there's 15 minutes of the movie that could have been snipped, because uh, these films, these musicals from back in the day, they, if they're over two hours, they don't, or near two hours, they don't need to be, because first of all, uh, these movies were made a long time ago, and, you know, they probably had a lot of story, so they wanted to pat that out into one film, and sometimes it's just way too long, just Get to an hour and a half or to an hour and 35 minutes and just end it. You don't need to make a musical that long. Like, you know, uh, what's it, My Fair Lady? It's like almost three hours. Yeah, it didn't need to be that long. Uh, Hello, Dolly, that's another movie. Really good movie, but way too long. It's like 20 minutes you could have cut out. This film, really good. Eleanor Powell's gorgeous in this movie. She can dance. Oh, my God, if I had met that woman, I would have just stroked her hair and just kissed her like crazy because she was so beautiful. Um, it was a good movie. Anne Southern sang very well in the film. Robert Young was really good. It's a really good, awesome movie. See, I like old movies, too. Black and white movies kick ass. Okay, next, um, I saw the remake of The Grudge. Short, uh, long story short, it's not the worst remake I've ever seen. Very watchable. Not a masterpiece at all. I rather, I want to see the original sometime. But i rather see it than any horror film this year, that's for sure enough said about that. Okay, next, I'll Be Seeing You. It was a Ginger Rogers movie that I saw from 1944. This is without Fred Astaire, but she was really good in the film. Ginger Rogers, I like her. She's a beautiful woman. Just seeing her in anything, I just have a smile on my face no matter what hair color or, or you know, what kind of a accent she does or whatever. She's always good. I would recommend it if you like Ginger Rogers. She's really fun in the film. Okay, um, it, it was kind of like, it was a comedy, but it also had some dramatic moments with, uh, that she was going to go to jail at the end of the film, but it was not, it was not bad. It didn't depress me because the guy was by her side all the time, uh, the soldier that she was with, and, uh, the, 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 the human drama really works. I love it when human drama works, you know, because when it works, it really gets to you. Sometimes it makes you cry, sometimes it makes you smile, sometimes it just, you know, it makes you feel something enough about that okay next christmas snow it was a 48 minute movie uh from like the 80s really short film really cute really sweet really good actors kid actors uh very heartwarming and it's a nice christmas movie to see there with your family so i would recommend that too um next was the co comedy gold mine and i did not see this coming Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. This was an amazing comedy. One of the best I've seen written or directed by John Hughes. Really good film. This is how you do a comedy right. John Candy was amazing. Uh, Stephen, Steve Martin made me laugh my ass off. I mean, the film is really, really short, but the comedy is there. The, the chemistry on screen is, is undeniable. Uh, the film was worth it. I bought it for five bucks at Best Buy. I'm going to show it in my next DVD update. 
Uh, I really, really enjoyed this film. I want to see it again before Thanksgiving. It's a very, very good comedy. I mean, I miss John Hughes and I miss John Candy. Those two made magic on screen. They really did. And I really recommend this comedy. Don't see any comedies this year in the theater that are not worth your time. Go see this movie sometime if you haven't. It's a gem from the 80s. It really is. And my last one I just saw uh, like about an hour ago or so ago. I saw Runaway with Tom Selleck from 1984. Awesome sci-fi action film. It's a lot of fun. It's very short. It's like an hour and 37 minutes. It's not two hours long like Transformers. And the robots are utilized very well. The effects look really good. Uh, Cynthia Rhodes was really fun. Uh, Kirstie Alley with the screen time she had. I wish she had more screen time, but she was good in the film. Uh, this guy, Gene Simmons, is one of the creepiest bad guys I've ever seen on screen. This guy, his eyes alone are creepy. He's a better bad guy than half of the bad guys in action movies today. Uh, really solid film. I can see why uh, OCP Communications really likes this film and Rambo Rap likes this film. It is a really good movie. Uh, I would recommend it. I wish it was on DVD in stores. It's like out of print. I wish it would get like a special edition because this movie deserves it. It's an awesome kick-ass sci-fi action thriller. And it's an awesome movie to watch any time of the week. So that's all the movies I've seen this week. I hope you guys have see, uh, seen a bunch of stuff yourself. Co uh, leave some comments. Leave a thumbs up. Just do a response video. Just, you know... I, I would recommend, uh, you know, just checking my channel and, you know, seeing if these movies appeal to you. They definitely appeal to me, most of them, except for Tammy. Tammy was a dud, but everything else, it got me through the week, so later, guys.